What a freaking letdown that was, huh? I mean, we came in riding high, four games in a row, and we just got our you-know-what's handed to us by the Arizona Cardinals, who won that game 26-7. to I guess I'll try to start by being positive here because there's a lot of negative things I'll probably get into in this game, but I guess the positive is, like, you know, they can still be in first place. I know they're 5-8 and eight now, but they can still be in first place if Washington loses to uh, the 49ers, so that is a positive. But, you know, there's also the fact that Daniel Jones was not 100%. And even someone like me that I feel like I'm very realistic about Daniel Jones. I let my uh, feelings be known. I don't hold anything back, as you guys know. But even me, I'll tell you guys this. I'm not going to really be too harsh on him. There were a few plays in there where I think I will be harsh on him. We'll probably go over that in the film review. But, you know, of course, there was that one play where Deion Lewis was wide open. A couple plays where he just held onto the ball way too long in the pocket. The ball control was terrible. But... Outside of those things, it's like, what did you expect him to do? Like, he was really playing hampered. There's really no way else to say it. You know, he was not playing near 100%, and Colt McCoy came in towards the end. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to play next week now, but hopefully he does because the Giants need him because Colt McCoy is not really the uh, recipe for success at the quarterback position. So trying to think of what else could be positive. Jabril Peppers once again played out of his mind. Dalvin Tomlinson had a sack. Um... Man, I don't really know what else, honestly. <laughs> that might be it. I'm sure there's some other things in there. Like, I don't know how the interior offensive line guys played. I feel like Nick Gates did all right. Zeitler, I feel like, was all right. So, you know, I guess there's some positives, but for the most part, a lot of negatives. So we'll get into it. Giants offense, we talked about Daniel Jones already, the struggles he had, missing some open guys, holding onto the ball too long. Ball control was terrible. Marcus Golden gets a strip sack, almost returned it for a touchdown, and yeah, that was not a good way to start the game. I think Jones fumbled the ball three or four times. He recovered it more times than not, but still, it was not good to see that. And, you know, you can say he's injured, but, like, what does a hamstring injury have to do with your ball security? You know, like, maybe it has a little something to do with it, but I don't know. Just for the way he's played the past month or so and to take that step back, it's kind of, like, discouraging and it's, like... You know, why are we going like all the way back to where we were before? I thought Daniel Jones was past this crap, but now it's like, well, we don't know. So we'll see. Um, the offensive line, yeah, mainly Andrew Thomas. I'm trying to think if Cam Fleming was terrible. I mean, I don't really think he was like too bad. But, you know, Hassan Reddick, who's a pretty good player. He's not amazing. He had five sacks in this game. I think Chandler Jones last year had four against us. Thank God he was out. That could have been even worse. But for a guy like Reddick to get five sacks against you is pretty unacceptable in my mind. So talked about Marcus Golden getting his revenge. Uh, Jason Garrett. You know, I wanted to be positive about Jason Garrett and think that he's getting this thing going in the right direction. But just comes to show you the guy has no creativity whatsoever. You watch like the Cardinals offense. I know it's a much different offense. It's spread offense. A lot of pistol formations. But... The Giants' offense is just so old-fashioned and so predictable. It's been working because the Giants the past month or so have been like, yeah, we're running the ball at the middle and you're not going to stop it. But unfortunately, when teams are stopping the run and you lack creativity, you're pretty much stuck in the dead end because like, once you can't run the ball consistently for five, six yards a clip, you kind of have to create yourself some offense. And Jason Garrett's just been you know, in a, unable to do that. And it's definitely holding this team back. So... I'm not sure if Jason Garrett's going to be a one-and-done type guy. I don't know if he's going to be here next year. But look, at this point, I'm not going to care. If they want to move on and and think they can do better, it's fine. I'm really not going to, you know, have any tears about that one, that's for sure. So we'll see. But he has to be better, honestly. Um, They lost time of possession 22-38. to The Giants have been getting much better in that category due to that. Wayne Gallman only saw 12 carries, only three for Alfred Morris. So they weren't really able to run the ball as much as they probably wanted to. And when you lose the time of possession that badly, you're kind of hindering yourself and holding yourself back. So that's unfortunate. Evan Engram, he was invisible. I forget his stat line off the top of my head. I think he had one catch towards the very end. I'm going to try and look real quick for you guys. But Evan Engram definitely took a step back. Uh, Two catches, 18 yards. Yeah, so nothing really there. The leader in receiving yards on this team was Golden Tate for 39. And when your leading receiver has one reception probably should realize it's not a good day. But Sterling Shepard had 3 for 35. Wayne Gloman 3 for 16 in the air. Darius Slayton had 3 for 31. Almost had a nice catch at the end there, but it did not happen. Hand came out, I think, out of bounds. So um, Deion Lewis had a pretty bad fumble on a kickoff. Um, I think the broadcast was saying that play was like illegal or something because the guy kicked the ball out. I guess you're not allowed to do that. I've never seen that before, honestly. That was pretty funny. But 
you know, it's t- it's a bad situation to have a fumble. Where like I think the score was like only ten nothing maybe at that point or six nothing, and he fumbles in a very bad spot, like on your own twenty five or whatever twenty. So not a good time for Dion Lewis to start fumbling the ball. Definitely not good. Um, trying to think what else offensively I can really uh, bring up here, but there was really nothing great to talk about. Like the offense was bland and just predictable and Daniel Jones was looking bad and hurt and that's pretty much it you got to hope they come back better next week and you know it's kind of discouraging because it's not like the um the Cardinals have this great defense it's not a top 10 defense in football it is a average defense to be kind and you know I mean we made them look a lot better than they really are so that was definitely unfortunate for the Giants defense not much pressure at all put on Kyler Murray. Um, Murray himself has been playing hurt recently. He kind of looked more healthy in this game. He went down at one point, so you have to probably assume that Kyler Murray's not 100% himself, but he played pretty well. But why did Kyler Murray play so well? Well, because he had five, six seconds to throw the ball every time. Like, I don't think the Giants even, I think Dalvin Tomlinson got to him once. I'll look real quick if there's any other sacks in there, but I don't really think so. I mean, they really didn't get much pressure on him whatsoever. Yeah, the Giants had one sack. He lost 13 yards on it to take them out of field goal range, which was nice, but really, Kyler Murray had all day back there to throw. It was just take your time, take your time, find the open guy. Um, I know that the scheme he's in definitely enables him to have more time, and Kyler Murray's one of the fastest quarterbacks in the league and he did he did run today i think he had like 47 rushing yards today so it wasn't like he ran for 100 but he he did run the ball a bit more this week as compared to the previous three weeks so i guess he was a little healthy but he did come up uh you know it looked injured at one point in the second quarter i think it was but he looked pretty good out there i'll give him that you know the giants left dan arnold wide open in the end zone at one point it might have been an all-out blitz i forget but dan arnold the tight end was just left back there wide open. They tried to hit him late. Not late, but they tried to hit him when the ball got there, but he held, he held on. Um, they couldn't recover either of the Kenyon Drake fumbles in the uh, third quarter. That was pretty big. Wow, Devontae Adams might score again. This guy's unbelievable. Wow. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was pretty big. The Kenyon Drake two fumbles, um, yeah, they couldn't get either of them. One of them was you know definitely more likely to get. The other one, I think, was recovered by him himself, or maybe it was his tight end next to him. But they got to get one of those at least. Um, Logan Ryan had a dropped interception in the second quarter. It might have been her first quarter. I think it was second quarter, but you guys probably know it was to uh, DeAndre Hopkins on the left sideline. He undercut it very nicely, just dropped the ball. So, yeah, you got to come up with those interceptions for sure. Dalvin Tomlinson had the sack to get him out of field goal range. Uh, Jabril Peppers continued his hot streak. He's looking really good. DeAndre Hopkins did have nine catches for 136 yards. I wasn't as concerned about Hopkins as I would have been in previous years because I figured that James Bradbury would do a very nice job on him. And honestly, a lot of his damage, I feel like, wasn't done on Bradbury. A lot of it was against zone. There was that one play where he ran the deep crosser, and I think Tay Crowder might have been supposed to back up a bit and covered him, but it didn't work, and he caught like a 40-something yard pass right there. So trying to think who else played well on defense today. Um, let's see. Jabal Sheard had a nice stop in there at one point. Logan Ryan was okay. Bradbury did have seven tackles, so that's a positive. Uh, Leonard Williams was pretty quiet in this game. Martinez had a couple of nice stops in this one. I remember he stopped the guy on the one at one point, so that was nice. Uh You know, B.J. Hill, when he was in there, did pretty well. I feel like Isaac Yadam was pretty good. Tay Crowder was okay. Carter Coughlin had some nice plays in the beginning. Dexter Lawrence got one nice pressure in there. I saw at one point Murray threw the ball away. Uh, We saw McKinney a bit in this game. Nothing special. Julian Love, nothing too special in my opinion. So, yeah, definitely a letdown game in this one. And this is why you really can't get ahead of yourselves. You know, this is the NFL. You got to go out there and win these games. And I saw a lot of comments this week that are like, man, we beat uh, Seattle. This is going to be easy. Arizona stinks. And I'm like, nah, like this is the NFL. And I, I did predict the Giants to win. I'm guilty. But... I never for a minute did I think, oh, this is going to be an easy win. Like, you know, the Giants were projected to lose this game by Vegas. I mean, like, they know a lot. So when the Giants are projected to lose this game by two and a half points, three points, one and a half, whatever the lines were, I didn't see the Giants favored at any point this year or at this week, I meant. So, you know, for people to think this was an easy win based on the way Arizona's been playing and the Giants have been playing, yeah, I think Arizona lost three of four. The Giants won four in a row. So everyone's like, oh, well, this is an obvious win. Well, no, that's not how the NFL works. I mean, 
I know people have been watching this sport longer than others, but like even me, I'm not that old, and I've, I've you know you know watched football long enough to know it's very week by week, and like you know crazy things happen. This is why you play the games, and you know I feel bad if you thought the Giants were guaranteed to win here because you're probably taking this one a lot harder. But it's just not how it works. You got to go out and win these games, and the Giants, as I mentioned in, in a tweet before, were beating every facet of the game. I can't. You know, I can't blame the quarterback single-handedly. I can't blame Joe Judge single-handedly. I can't blame the defense. I mean, I wouldn't blame the defense anyway. But you can't blame the wide receivers. You can't blame Evan Ingram like we always do. You could blame the offensive line. But, you know, even for some of those sacks, I mean, the quarterback held on to the ball too long. Let's be honest. So, you know, they got to play better. Everyone's got to play better. They got to come back next week looking a lot more crisp and just better as a team. And, you know, next week they play the Browns, I believe, on Sunday Night Football. Not sure if Daniel Jones is going to be there. If he's out, it's going to be a tough game to win, that's for sure. So I just had the uh, – a red zone just had the uh, Niners game on. I did not see the score, unfortunately. But hopefully Washington finds a way to lose that game. That would be nice. But if the Giants uh, – if the Washington football team wins, we're back in the second place. And I think Dallas won today. I'm not sure what their record is, but – I guess Dallas winning is probably not a good thing either because they can't be too, too far behind. So trying to think what else I missed here, honestly. Um, let's look at the matchup stats real quick to see what I missed. So first downs, they killed us 22-10. Third down efficiency, we were 3 for 12. They were 7 for 18. Fourth downs, we were 1 for 1. They were 1 for 2, so I guess that's a positive. Rushing yards, we lost 78 to 159. Wow. Passing yards, 81. 81 passing yards in 2020. That's bad. To 231. Um, let's see. Sacks, 8-1. to one. Not good. No interceptions. Um, our punter wasn't that great. I, I feel like Riley Dixon's been kind of taking a step back in recent weeks, but it's nothing to complain about, really. He hasn't been awful. I'll put it that way. Penalty yards, only 10 yards of penalty yards for us. Uh, 22 yards for them. Giants had... Five fumbles lost, is that right? That's terrible. And they lost three of them. So, yeah, that's not good. Um, let's see. Time possession, I went over 22 to 38. So, um, yeah, just a very underwhelming game. That's for sure. So, hopefully they come back next week. I'm intrigued to look at the film review for this game and see what went wrong exactly, why they were so bad. But, yeah, uh, it's, it's not good. Anyway, you can leave me um, some suggestions, I guess, for highlight videos you want to see because I do unfortunately have COVID currently, so that sucks. I'll be out of work for like a week and a half or two. So, yeah, I'll have some time on my hands to make some highlights if you guys want. So I will uh, do that if you want, but let me know which players you want to see and all that. Um, I'll talk to you guys for the film review in a couple of days. Hopefully that comes out tomorrow, but you never know with NFL Game Pass. We'll find out. But um, that's pretty much it. You know, hopefully we get Cleveland next week. It's going to be a tough game, as we know. They're a legit team. They're tough, but we'll find out. But let's just root for Washington to lose, and hopefully by the time I upload this, we'll have our answer. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.